So you're thinking about buying a house and now's the best time to get it because the rates are low and you still have your job, I hope. With that said, this is the 10 steps in buying a house. Let's get it. How you guys doing? My name is MJ and welcome to the channel. In this channel, we talk about personal finance, stock market, and also buying a house. So if you guys are interested in these kind of videos, please consider subscribing, liking the video. And this is gonna be a long one, so I suggest that you get your cup of coffee, pause this video, get your cup of coffee, and if you guys want my two cents, I would take it from Humble Maker Coffee. Humble Maker Coffee are coffee roasters that are based in California. They care for the society and also um, the sustainability of coffee. So if you guys want your fresh roasted coffee, just order online. Links down below. So recently, my wife and I just uh, walked away from a house transaction that could have been ours, but because of the pandemic, things had to happen this way. It is what it is, but it was the right choice at the right time, in my opinion. I hope to share you guys some of the things that I've learned along the way, and also some things that you guys can implement on your home transaction especially if it's your first time buying a house. So three mindsets that I would try to share with you guys are number one is to record everything. You gotta record everything. Definitely put everything written as much as possible. I know I forget a lot of things so I always try to get a notebook or or maybe your phone and put it on your notes just so you record everything. And if you guys can have signed documents that's even better because you guys can hold that in court. If need be and number two communicate accordingly there's some things that you are gonna have to communicate with a very stern voice but also sometimes you have to switch it up and make it to a, a tone where it's more communicative more approachable to other people and that varies from time to time so definitely communicate accordingly as you should and most importantly lastly do your own due diligence research 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 read ask uh, follow some mentors influencers put your attention to them because they're going to give you guys the best form of advice especially for first-time home buyers so i'm just going to give a broad general uh, idea uh, we are going to try to make a series out of these hopefully in the future videos but for the meantime we're just going to keep a general 10 steps so here we go first thing that you got to do is to not shop first thing that you got to do is you got to get a pre-approval letter what does that mean pre-approval letter is when you go to a financial place a financial institution where you're gonna potentially get a loan from them either a bank financial institution you're gonna have to fork your credit scores your bank statements and things of that nature so they're gonna get they're gonna get your information financial information so you guys can get a clear picture of how much you can afford to purchase in a house. It goes without saying that this is the most fun to most people, but to some people it might be the, the most stressful, is to go shopping for, for a house. And it has to line up with your goals. Is it your first time buying a house? Is it for an investment? What kind of house would you want? A duplex, triplex, um, multi-family, or would it be a bungalow? Would it be three stories however you want that's you're in a candy store when it comes to shopping for a house and it has to be in line with your goals and also to number one your pre-approval letter which is your limit budget and also in this point I hope I really hope that you already have a real estate agent a reliable real estate agent that you can count on and would take care of you in the process and this is important because on number three because number three is when you're gonna try to buy the house through a listing agent so you're gonna sign a letter of intent or basically a purchase agreement and it's also encompasses an earnest money which is kind of a promissory uh, deposit to the house saying that you're you're willing to buy this house the most important key in to signing a purchase agreement is reading everything when I mean reading everything, it needs to be fair for you. It needs to be fair for also the the seller. But if from my experience, the seller tends to have more of a leverage over you. And that's a lesson learned from me. And 
I hope that you don't get in that kind of position. Citing a purchase agreement also entails, do you have to have financing when you purchase this house? Is it going to be remodeled? Is it going to be this? It's going to be that. That also um, ties up with getting this house and signing that dotted line. So that's very important. This is the halfway point of the video. If you guys are liking the video, please give it a like and let's proceed. So moving on, we have four things that I bundled it all together in an acronym called FIAT, like the car, F-I-A-T. FIAT means financing, inspection, appraisal, and title. Basically financing is when you decide if it's gonna be a 30, 20, 15 year loan, how much is the interest rate. This is kind of like the epicenter of this transaction where you gotta nitpick everything because you're gonna sign and agree on some things. You're gonna be paying a lot in interest, so be mindful of how much the interest would be and also the property taxes and things like that. So be careful. So inspection is also very important depending on what kind of house you're gonna buy. You're gonna to wanna to know how much the the renovation costs are, the, uh, the upgrades, the roof, the repairs, all of that. And trust me, it does cost, it goes, it goes up and it's lengthy in time as well. So be careful with that. Appraisals is when you get the value of the house from a professional, which is an appraiser. And that is important because you're gonna base that appraisal value and depending on the bank or the financial in institution, how much they're gonna loan to you. Loan to value ratio is the percentage that the bank is gonna give you dependent on the value of the home. So the higher the, the higher the value of the home, the more the bank is gonna loan to you. Simple as that. And last but not least, title, also escrow. So title is also important because it's basically where you and pretty much the state is gonna figure out who has interest in the house. Is it your wife and you? Is it just your wife? Is it just you? Is it um, a relative that has part interest in a house that's very important because when um, things go south you want to know who owns who and how much so we're down to the last two final inspection the final walkthrough where you walk through the house with hopefully your realtor maybe your trusted friend where they're gonna help you see which ones are not working maybe the lights are not working um, maybe there's still some ambiguous things like outlets that doesn't work, switches, maybe water problems, things that of that nature. You want to get reliable people with you. No matter how long it takes, do your due diligence, inspect everything, do your walkthrough with the mindset of you paying for a lot of money for this house. You want to make sure that everything is in tip top before closing of escrow. And a lot of sellers, possibly builders, uh, want to have these days very short in gap so please be careful when you do this ask them to have the um, close of escrow extended if you need more time because the last thing you want to do is to get rushed that's just my advice last but not least Prorations. This is close of escrow. This is when you sign the dotted line. Hopefully your real estate agent is with you. The escrow officer is going to be with you. And hopefully you got your your financials all straightened out. That's related on my earlier point where you record everything. Everything is financially sound according to you. That Make sure that you're, the ones that you're going to pay are the ones that you're going to pay and the ones that the seller is going to pay is the seller's going to pay. And no ambiguity there. Just be careful. And if you guys need more information about buying a house for the first time, I got some links down below, some Amazon books, and also some YouTube videos. Check them out. So I challenged you guys to ask me what kind of things that you guys are still concerned about buying a new home. I know you guys are filled with this information. I know it's kind of discombobulated and there's so many stuff. So I suggest you guys give me a question down below. It's some way that I can help you guys purchase your first home. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is kind of a long-winded video, but if you guys got this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing. Don't forget that notification bell. Don't forget links down below. Humble Maker Coffee. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.